Wiltshire Police received a call from a member of the public who was quite distraught and was telling us that she was going to be taking her own life. Uh, as a result of information that the triage nurse was able to obtain, along with background sounds from the mobile phone conversation, we were able to pin down a few locations where we thought she might be. Uh, I happened to be closest to this location and pulled down into uh, um, Gramshaw Road to the end. Uh, and there's a footpath at the end, as you can see. And as I walked there, I could see a, an outline of a person stood on the train tracks. I think I was hopeful that she wasn't going to be here, because if she's not on the train track where I am, then maybe she's not on a train track at all. Um, and therefore, the threat to her life is, is less. Um, but that's not quite how it worked out, obviously. I engaged with the lady um, who hung up her mobile phone and started to talk to me. And she was quite clear, clearly very, very distressed and quite adamant that she was going to just wait for the next train to come along um, and just stand there and let it take her out. You know, as I, as I started to speak with her, I was hopeful that I was going to be able to persuade her quite gently to come around and step to one side and talk to me and let me try and help her with the issues that she was struggling with. Um, again, time was very short ultimately and there wasn't a lot of time to build a rapport with her. Then I heard a horn sound and after the horn sounded, a short time later the train came uh, around the bend in the distance, probably travelling at about 40 miles an hour. Uh, at that point, you know, when you realise the train's arriving and it's, it's there and everything crystallises in that moment. So I stepped forward onto the track, took hold of the lady um, who was, not to be rude, quite a, a, a size, quite a large lady. And initially I was unable to actually move her. I had to let go of her, take a step back and almost rugby tackle her too. I had some momentum to, to add to, to that and I was able to move her off of the tracks just as the train came by. Two colleagues, I didn't know at the time they were PCSOs until after were just arriving um, at the head of the footpath. They were really unsure as the train arrived whether we'd actually made it out of the path of the train. It was, they were really quite terrified that something really bad had happened. But um, again, it was not till afterwards that you yourself start thinking about what might have been and, and how things might have been different. She, she looked at me um, with a very different look in her eye to the way she looked at me when I first got off the track as we parted. And, and um, you know, I said to her, I said, you're going to get your help and you're going to be OK. And she said, maybe, maybe I will be. And I think, you know, that's the best we can hope for in situations like that. You know, my son was four, my wife heavily pregnant, expecting our, our daughter almost any time really in the next couple of weeks and I guess for me it was the fact that they might have been orphaned if I'd got that wrong um, and I'd waited such a long time to be a dad um, and had an absent father when I was growing up the last thing I'd really want for my family is to grow up without a father around. As police officers we stand between the weak and the threats that they endure it's almost like um, it's part of our DNA, really, that we will work as hard as we can to protect other people. Ultimately, it goes down to what kind of human being you are. Um, and good, decent human beings help other human beings.